Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of Airway Mapping Made Easy, the video tutorial series where I share how to convert a CT thorax into a hand-drawn airway map for bronchoscopy. I'm Pip, an interventional pulmonologist from Woodlands Health, Singapore, and in today's video, I will be taking you through a more complex case of airway mapping of the right upper lobe. Please feel free to revisit the other videos on my YouTube channel to review the concepts of airway mapping. And do like, share and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming video tutorials. Today's case is a 70-year-old lady who is a non-smoker and was referred following an incidental finding of a lung nodule on chest x-ray. She has a positive family history of lung cancer. A CT thorax was done and the images are as shown. Please take some time to review the CT images and to identify the location of the nodule. Do also see if you can spot the interesting anatomical variation which is present on her CT scan. To recap, this is our framework on the five steps to airway mapping. We will go through this together step by step. The first step is to locate the lung segment in which the lesion is located. Take a moment to rewind the video if you need to review the CT scan and lock in your answer. Yes, it is in the right upper lobe. We can then go on to the second step, which is to find the appropriate CT reconstruction. Recall from the first video in the series that all airways travel in one of three general directions, the cranial caudal, anterior posterior or medial lateral directions. And if the airway travels in the medial lateral direction as shown by the straw, using the sagittal view will help you to see it as a circle. In this case, because the right upper lobe appears as a tube traveling in the medial to lateral direction, we can use the sagittal CT to visualize the tubes as holes. Now that we have located the nodule in the right upper lobe, RB2 segment, and decided to use the sagittal CT, we then need to proceed to steps 3 and 4, which is to orientate the CT image through flipping and or rotation to align with the bronchoscopic view and to match the direction of our CT scrolling to the expected movement of the bronchoscope. When using the sagittal CT, the posterior, as indicated by the spine, shown here, should be on the right, and the anterior, as indicated by the heart here, should be on the left. It is important to be able to correctly identify the right upper lobe segment on the sagittal CT. Playing through the images as we go down the track here, all you need to do is to identify the right main stem bronchus and then watch where it splits into the right upper lobe and the right bronchus intermedius. What is interesting about this CT is that we see that there's an oblique fissure, but there's no horizontal fissure, and the tumor lies close to the oblique fissure. We see that the usual right upper lobe anatomy does not exist. And if we were to scroll back through the CT images, and we follow this lowermost hole here. We see that it is actually branching off from the right upper lobe. And as we follow it through, we realize that there is no horizontal fissure, and indeed there is no distinct middle lobe present. Indeed, the right upper lobe anatomy in this case is the same as what we see usually in the left upper lobe. It is crucial to understand the movements made by the bronchoscope, as these are the same movements in which we need to make to orientate the CT scan. During bronchoscopy into the right upper lobe posterior segment, we are moving in a medial to lateral direction, where after entering the trachea, we take a turn at the carina and move in the medial to lateral direction within the right upper lobe. 
no flipping or rotation of the sagittal CT is required. We will again get teddy bear to help us to visualize this in 3D. The sagittal CT is on the left and the teddy bear on the right is demonstrating the right upper lobe airways as indicated. During bronchoscopy, the teddy bear is positioned as shown. Recall that our bronchoscope will be moving in the medial to lateral direction. This means that our bronchoscopic view is from the side of the teddy bear, and the blue arrow again shows the bronchoscope moving in the medial to lateral plane. This demonstrates that our orientation of the bronchoscopic view will be exactly the same as the sagittal CT, as shown, with no flipping required. And in summary, for the right upper lobe RB2, we just need to find the sagittal CT and then scroll the CT from medial to lateral. We are now ready to draw our airway map. Now, we are ready to begin the process of drawing our airway map. We start by finding the right mean stem bronchus. And on the CT, we see here that it divides into the right upper lobe and the right lower lobe. I will now zoom in so that we have a better view of the right upper lobe. I'll start by scrolling in the medial to lateral direction towards the nodule. And we can see that there's a target airway leading to the nodule, which I will indicate with my arrow pointer. We now follow that target airway and scroll backwards to the right upper lobe. And we can pay attention to where it joins And now we're ready to begin to draw. We start by drawing the right upper lobe as a circle and we pay attention to the branching angles as they appear. The first is a small hole which appears at the top and we draw it at this angle as such. And scrolling further, we see the hole at the bottom actually splits and the small hole at the bottom is the middle lobe takeoff, which we discussed earlier. We then see that the hole in the center splits left and right at this angle and we draw it as such. Following the right hole, we then see it splits up and down at this angle and we draw it as such. Following this up hole, we see that it splits left and right at this angle. And finally, if we were to follow the right hole, looking closely, we see that it splits up and down at this angle. And the target airway is the bottom one here, which leads to the nodule. We now compare our airway map to our bronchoscopic view. When we enter the right upper lobe, we see that it indeed has this unique vertical orientation. And this bottom hole, which corresponds to our airway map over here, is the branch which leads to the area that was supposed to supply the right middle lobe. We of course follow the hole in the center as drawn by our airway map that supplies the anterior and the posterior segments of the right upper lobe. And when we go inside there, we see that it indeed splits according to the angle that we have drawn and we follow the hole on the right. Moving in, we see that it splits up and down and of course we will follow the hole on top. And here we can see it splits left and right and we have to follow the hole on the right. 
And going into the hole on the right, we see it splits up and down, and we follow the down hole. And of course, that leads us to a concentric radio E-bus image. We used an MP190 scope to enter as distally as you could into the airway. And here you can clearly see the image of the nodule on radio E-bus corresponding to the fluoroscopic image. Forceps biopsies were taken of the nodule and touch imprints were performed for rapid on-site evaluation. The pictures of the touch imprint cytology are as shown and were positive for malignancy. The patient was diagnosed with TTF1 positive non-small cell lung adenocarcinoma. Systematic media sinus screening was performed with EBUS and was negative for any lymph nodes. She has since undergone curative resection with right UVAT's upper lobe lobectomy. Comparing her pre and post surgical resection x-rays, you can appreciate with the chest x-ray on the right, the unusual extreme tenting of the diaphragm post resection. And this is due to the interesting anatomical variation where there was no distinct middle lobe and it was part of the right upper lobe airways. Thank you very much for joining me on today's tutorial of airway mapping on the right upper lobe. You can find me on LinkedIn and Instagram. Do message me if you have any comments, queries or suggestions for future videos. Please do like, share and subscribe to my video tutorial series so that you won't miss out on another episode of Airway Mapping Made Easy. Thank you.